I feel like 2019 is gonna be a huge year for Unity and they actually proved me right by announcing this blog post right here. So Unity 2019.1 is now released in beta and it's available through Unity Hub and on their website. So in this video, we're gonna check out what's new, what's shiny, all of the new features. And I'm really excited because there have been some features that I was really looking forward to that are in this release. And also I wanna mention that I'm going to be making beginner's guide videos, like basically beginner friendly videos to all of these features that they're releasing and they're publishing this year. So make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to tune. Just get a little bit of promotion there. <laughs> also, this video is brought to you all by Richard Stance, Cupola, Flu Joey, Build or Die, MakeAGame.com, Couch Ferret, Gilhorma Leandro, AcademyofGames.com, and Terrorrift.com. Thanks to your support on Patreon, I'm able to make more videos. So now with that being said, let's go ahead and check out Unity 2019.1. Unity started their blog post by saying this, quote, 2019.1 marks the start of the newest tech stream with lots of new features and functionalities. This includes more control over the editor and improvements to both your potential iteration speed when developing for Android and your workflows in general. This is a release that really does improve Unity's workflow, which I think 2019 as a whole will be used to mainly focus on upgrading Unity's engine and the core itself, right? And I'm glad they're doing this because now it's going to become more modern and kind of just suit itself to this age. Now, the first thing they announce is the incremental garbage collection. And if you don't know what garbage collection is, don't worry, because obviously Psycho's got you covered. When you create any object in C Sharp, CLR or common language runtime allocates memory for the object from here. Heap. This process is repeated for each newly created object, but there's obviously a limitation to everything, right? So memory is not unlimited and we need to clean some used space in order to make room for new objects. GC or garbage collector makes a trip to the heap and collects all objects that are no longer used by the application and then makes them free from memory. Now this is what Unity say about this, quote, in Unity 2019.1, we're introducing the incremental garbage collector as an experimental alternative to the existing garbage collector. The incremental garbage collector is able to split its work into multiple slices. Instead of having a single long interruption of your program's execution to allow the GC to do its work, so the garbage collector, you can have multiple, much shorter interruptions. While this will not make the GC faster overall, it can significantly reduce the problem of GC spikes breaking the smoothness of animations in your project by distributing the workload over multiple multiple frames. To learn more, read our blog post here. So they're linking you to the blog post and I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description too. And I strongly suggest you all to check it out in case you're interested to learn how this method works and why they pick to choose or like approach this problem by using the incremental garbage collector instead of the regular one. Now enough garbage. <laughs> we are here to talk about 2019 and now remember when I said Unity 2019 will be a year where they kind of rebrand the engine visually, while this new feature called the shortcut manager is a huge step in the right direction in doing so. Here's what Unity say about the shortcut manager, quote, with the shortcut manager, we're introducing an interactive visual interface and a set of APIs to make it easier for you to manage editor hot, hotkeys, hot, hotkeys, <laughs> editor hotkeys, assign them to different contexts and visualize existing bindings. To address the issue of binding conflicts, the interface can also visualize whether multiple commands use the same binding and let you remap accordingly. I just gotta say, the fact that it's visual and you can actually see the keyboard in there is so valuable. I think it's really nice of them to focus on visual tools now, especially like visual programming, which is also coming up this year. It will become super useful for everyone, obviously, as it's easier to understand, but especially for people just getting into game development and don't wanna really deal with a complex language to do something simple. And now that like this is kind of the year, or maybe even like the past three years have been the years where a lot of new people new faces are coming into game development. So I think it's really valuable for them too. Now there's also more functionality added to the GPU light mapper, which is still in preview, by the way. They added platform support for the GPU light mapper and finally it supports Mac OS and Linux, no longer only Windows, which was like the biggest problem with it. Um, it also supports double-sided GI flags on materials as well as shadow casting and receiving on meshes. And if you haven't tried out the GPU light mapper yet, I strongly suggest you do so after watching this video because 
it makes baking light maps so much easier and so much faster. And another feature that I've personally been looking forward to is scene visibility. Now Unity said this about scene visibility, quote, use Unity scene vis controls to quickly hide and show objects in the scene view without changing the objects in game visibility. As the scene becomes more detailed, it often helps to temporarily hide or isolate specific objects, allowing you to view and edit without obstructions. SceneVis enables this functionality via hierarchy tools and keyboard shortcuts, plus a toolbar toggle to quickly enable or disable the effects. Now, I'm really interested to see if this is supported by the shortcut manager, despite it being super new, despite both of the, these features being super new, um, because obviously it says you can control this via keyboard shortcuts, so it makes sense. Scene visibility will become really useful now as you no longer have to disable game objects, but simply turn them invisible in the scene view to get this boost of performance in Unity while building your levels. Now for all you Android developers out there, Unity Hub now provides the option to install all the required components for Android as part of the Android build support option, so you're sure to get the correct dependencies and don't have to gather and install anything else. If you're an advanced Android user, you can still install and configure components manually and use Android Studio as well, so that's totally fine. There is also a new package added to Unity which is named Android Logcat. Android Logcat package is, how do you pronounce this? Android Logcat package is a util, you know, I can't. It's a utility for displaying log messages coming from Android devices in the Unity editor, making it easier to debug by controlling and filtering messages right in Unity. There is now a faster iteration with scripts only patching for Android devices too, which is huge. Now they say this, quote, to perform faster iterations during development, the Unity editor offers the scripts only build option, which skips many steps in the build process and recompiles only the scripts, then builds the final package and deploys after selecting build and run. We have extended this feature. Now it allows you to patch the app package on target devices instead of rebuilding and redeploying it. So when you're iterating on your C -sharp code, only recompiled libraries are sent to the device. Note that a complete build of the project must be available before Unity can execute a scripts only build. So basically you have to build the project, the entire project once, and then you can start using scripts only build. That's really nice because now you can finally patch your Android games without actually having to rebuild the entire project, which is really good. There are also improvements made to the console tab. So the editor console has been updated with clickable stack trace links that will take you to the source code line for any function calls listed in the stack and textual search to filter down your console entries. And finally, there are updates made to the timeline feature. They have now added timeline timeline signals and they state this, quote, timeline signals are an easy way for timeline to interact with objects in the scene. Using a signal emitter and a signal asset, you can trigger a signal receiver in a game object that will define a set of pre-configured reactions to your timeline. Signal emitters can be created on the new marker area and on any type of track and new signal tracks. They're fully customizable, so go wild and create your own. And they also say then use signal receiver components to trigger trigger predefined contextual reactions on your game objects. All right, so that should give you an overview of what the blog post says and also what is new and shiny in 2019.1. And obviously I'm really looking forward to using these features and making tutorials out of them and show you guys how to use them. So if you wanna see that and if you wanna see more videos during 2019 and beyond of all of the features that Unity is gonna publish, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also let me know in the comments if you guys wanna see a shortcut manager video next up. And of course on top of that, if you have any other suggestions or maybe even questions if you're like having a hard time with 19.1 or whatever it might be, let us know in the comments because we're a community who'd love to help other people. Also, I got a partnered by Discord last night. Finally, dude, I've been waiting for this for so long. And now I we finally have, like, I'm getting the hoodie, okay? <laughs> I just want to disclose, I'm getting the partnership hoodie or whatever, like Discord hoodie. But most importantly, we have a custom URL. We have the custom splash screen art, I think it's called. <laughs> and we have the VIP server and more emotes. So I'm really looking forward to more memes, obviously, because <laughs> you guys meme everything. So, but yeah, I'm really pumped about this. And if you guys want to join the Discord server now, you can go to the link here. Uh, let me <laughs> center this. So it's going to be discord.gg forward slash polyrealm. And for those of you who didn't know, polyrealm is the name of 
our community. So if you guys want to join, go to that link or in the description box and also in the pinned comment actually. So I'm going to paste it there. But seriously, I just want to give a huge thank you to all of you watching this video because if it wasn't for 100k subs and you know, every single one of you following the channel, following the content, um, being a part of this community and whatnot, like literally participating in any way you can in these community activities, including the videos, I wouldn't be partnered, you know, we wouldn't be partnered, we wouldn't have a Discord server of like almost 10,000 members, which is insane. And I know this is like a cliche thing to say, but it's technically because of you guys, so thank you. Now that I was emotional, let's do a little bit of self-promotion. If you guys enjoyed this video and wanna see more, make sure to give it a thumbs up to show some support and hit the subscribe button below the video once again for more tutorials and to make sure you stay up to tune. I feel like I'm slowly becoming like a normal, normie YouTuber, like Merchant Bio, <laughs> 200 IQ Unity moment. <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna be super active in the comment section and in our Discord server. So I hope to see you guys there and I look forward to see you guys there. So thanks for watching. Have a good night and peace out.